I'm gonna show you how to create this paper cutout stop motion effect all in After Effects. Here in After Effects, I've got this design that I made in Illustrator and then converted all of the layers to shape layers. And this effect will work on anything, text, shape, comps, you name it. First, we're gonna make these dancing shape edges where it looks like a new piece of paper has been cut out every few frames. Here we are in a comp that hasn't been animated and let's start with this yellow shape, which is called Burst 8. Let's open up its properties by opening the arrow down here. And then we're gonna click Add and select Wiggle Paths. Now, if we play it, we can see those paths are wiggling. That's a start. But when we open up the wiggle paths with this arrow down here, you can see we have a lot more options. So let's make the size more prominent to about 20. We're gonna take the wiggles per second down to zero because we're gonna animate them using the random seed. So we're gonna to go to random seed and alter option click the stopwatch here to bring up the expressions window. And I'm gonna enter the expression time times 50. And then we'll just keep an ever increasing value happening on this property. So now if we play it back, every frame has a completely random wiggle, but we don't want it to wiggle every frame. So let's add to our expression at the very beginning, posterize time, and then we put six in the brackets and then separate it with a semicolon. And here's what that looks like. Posterize time sets how many times a second that value will change. And because we're in a 24 frames per second comp, six times a second is every four frames. A low frame rate will really help this look like it was animated with stop motion. Now let's change the detail down to zero. And now I've got our animated cutout shape look. Now we can simply click on wiggle path, copy it with Ctrl C, select all of our other spiky burst layers and paste it. When we play it back, you'll see that they're all kind of wiggling in the same direction at the same speed, which doesn't look random. And that's because they're all using the same random seed value. So let's undo that and go back to that expression we just wrote. And I'm gonna add some more randomness to this by adding plus index times 100. Index gives the number of the layer, and in this case, it is number 11 in the stack. So it'll go as the number 11, and then we're gonna multiply that by 100, just to make that larger. And because the index is gonna be different on every layer, I'm multiplying it by 100, the random seed is gonna be completely different on each layer. So now I can copy the wiggle paths property, go back and paste it on everything. And now it looks much more random. Like each one is a completely different cutout piece of paper. Or it will look like that once we add the effects. Now let's add a bit of movement to the avocado layers. I'm not adjusting their path with the wiggle path like the spikes because if this were a real paper cutout, it would just be the same pieces of paper for each section, every frame, just slightly shifting. So we're gonna animate them using a wiggle expression. So let's go over to layer eight, which is the uh, lightest color of the flesh of the avocado. We're gonna open up its position property with P, alt click the stopwatch and add our favorite expression, wiggle. And I'm gonna type frequency of six, amplitude of two. So this will randomly move the position of this layer six times a second up to a maximum of two pixels. Now let's see how that looks. There we are. Now it's still animating every frame, which we don't want. So let's add posterized time as well. Now you could just add a posterized time effect to this layer and that would do the same thing, but doing it in the expression is just gonna make it easier when we go to copy it, which we're going to do now. So what we can do is right click over the word position and select copy expression only because we don't want to paste the position values of this, just the expression. And now we're going to select pretty much every layer in the stack and then paste it. And now that's applied to all of our layers. There are some layers like maybe the pupils and the eyes so we don't want to quite move as much. So we can just go into their expression and change that value down to one pixel a second, depending on how much movement you want in your layers. Let's add a wiggle expression to the rotation as well. Again, doing it on my fresh pale layer. And I'm following the same process, but I'm just gonna give it a one pixel wiggle at this point. And again, copy and paste that to all the layers. There we are, now these are rotating slightly as well. But if we zoom out, all these sort of outer layers of the spiky burst are probably rotating a bit too much. And that's because, you know, their anchor point is right in the middle of the layer. So the bits on the outside are just moving a greater distance because of that rotation. So let's go into some of these other burst layers and just lower that expression to maybe something like 0.3. So now there's just not quite as much movement on the edge here. So now everything has got a little bit of movement as if it's being shifted slightly in between shooting all the frames in a stop motion animation. And you could achieve this similar boiling look with maybe a turbulent displace effect on an adjustment layer. But this method gives you a lot more control over the individual elements and it will look miles better once we start adding the lighting effects and textures, which we're gonna do now. 
A quick word about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with so much to explore, real projects to create, and support your fellow creatives. I love the length of these classes. They're long enough to get to the meat and get in depth with these subjects, but short enough so you don't have to reschedule your life around them. You can explore new topics and follow your curiosity anywhere it takes you. Some classes that I've been watching and getting enormous inspiration from are Simple Character Animation with Fravid Davidson from Cub Studio, who shows you how to pose and animate characters in the most effective ways, and Digital Illustration Learn to Use Procreate with Jaron Vogel, who creates these insane designs just on his iPad. A Skillshare annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Unlimited access to all of their top tier classes from such amazing artists and industry experts, that's unbelievable value. But do believe it because it's true. And you can click the link in the description to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. So let's start by adding a drop shadow effect to our Avo Flesh Dark layer. Now to get a realistic looking drop shadow, it's good to use three drop shadow effects. You could use more, but I think three is good enough for almost all cases. Let's turn the bottom two off for the moment. The top one should be tight to the edge of the object and it should be the darkest. So let's go to a 30% opacity a distance of three pixels and a softness of 10. The next one we want to be a bit larger and faded out. So we're gonna make that opacity 15, distance of six and a 50 pixel softness. And then for the last one, 10% opaque, 10 pixel distance and a 50 pixel softness. Actually, this middle one should be a lot less soft. Let's go to 25. Now this gives us a lot smoother of a gradient and already when we you know zoom out, it kind of looks like it, you know, is raised above the other layers quite significantly and it's a really cool and a really easy way to get a pretty realistic lighting effect. I'm also going to add the effect bevel alpha and I'm going to put that right at the top of our effect stack. Yeah, and this effect can look pretty um, garbage sometimes, but if we set it really low, let's set it to one pixel and set the light intensity to 0 0.2, well, that is going to give us just the tiniest highlight on the left edge here, as if the edge of this paper is catching the light, which just adds a tiny bit more realism, I think. Now, another thing I'm going to do is link up all the directions of these shadows. So I'm going to alt option click start watching the direction, and that is going to bring up the expression window down here. And I'm just going to take this pick whip and drag it up to the direction of our top drop shadow and do that for both of these bottom ones. And then I'm going to do the same for the light angle of our bevel alpha. And then I'm just going to put a plus 180 at the end as well, because we want it to face the opposite direction of our shadow. So now if we alter the direction of this drop shadow, you can see it changes on all of them because they are all linked. And let's put that at maybe 125. And now we're going to use a really useful technique to add this effect to all the other layers. So let's so click and select all of these layers and I'm going to go up to edit and instead of just copying these I'm going to select copy with relative property links. Now we just need to select all the layers that we want that effect on, uh, not flesh dark because we've already applied that and then paste with control V. And now that's applied to all of our layers and the best thing is if we go back to our avo flesh dark layer where we first added these effects because all the directions are linked with the relative properties if we change the direction on this layer it changes on all of the layers and not just the direction. If we wanted to change you know, the bevel alpha, we can do that on all the layers. That actually doesn't look too bad. And the distance on all the shadows, that can all be adjusted just with this one layer, which is really handy if we change our minds later or when the inevitable client feedback comes through. Now let's add some texture. I've got a texture layer over here called texture one, and I'm just gonna drag that into our comp. Now this is a piece of paper texture that I've recolored in this layer to be close to around a 50% gray. And that is because we're gonna change its blending mode to overlay. And that's just gonna add some nice texture to any layer underneath. Now this looks all right at the moment, but when we play it back, it doesn't move with the individual cutout paper elements below it, which it would if this was a real stop motion piece of paper. So to do that, I'm gonna attach this texture to each of these layers. So let's move this texture over our Avo skin layer. And I'm gonna add the set matte effect and set it to take the mat from layer 11, Avo Skin. Now here it isn't quite working properly and that's because we haven't got continuously rasterized set on both layers. So if you set mat isn't working, make sure both of these layers have this selected. And now it's matted just to that skin layer and I'm gonna parent it to the Avo Skin with the pick whip down here. And now if we play it back, that texture will shift slightly with the wiggle of that layer. And it just looks quite a bit more realistic if you wanna give it that extra detail. So I'm gonna duplicate that texture and do that for all of our layers. Now it might seem tedious, but this really doesn't take all that long, maybe 10 minutes. And then every layer I move it to, I'm just gonna shift the position of that texture layer as well. So there's a bit of variance between each one. 
And so when I'm applying it to a really pale layer, like a pale flesh here, I might actually add the effect brightness and contrast and just pump up the contrast a fair bit. So we get more of that white value that we can see in this layer here. And for really dark layers like the mouth, I'm gonna change the blending mode to screen and add a curves effect and adjust the darkness on that. So we just get a lot more of that white popping through. Now there we are, each layer is textured. Now we're using the same texture for each layer and you know, if we were using different pieces of paper, they would have different textures. So the more textures we use, the more realistic it's going to be. So I've prepared a second texture over here, which is just a, you know, similar looking paper texture that is slightly different to our first one. And I'm just gonna select every other texture layer here in my timeline, just clicking on every other tan layer that I see. Then I'm gonna select texture two in our project window over here, hold alt, and then drag that layer either onto our timeline or into our composition. And when we release it, it will replace all of the texture layers we've selected with texture two. So we, now we have half texture one, half texture two. So there's just a bit more variety in the texture happening in here now. Then I added a bit more animation to this scene and I animated the stars growing and shrinking with a shape path property, or you could use scale as well. And then I animated the color of each of these spiky burst layers. And I did that by adding a fill effect and animating the color. Let's solo this layer so we can just see it on its own. I animated the color property to just cycle through all our three green colors and used a loop out cycle expression. So it would repeat that. And then on the next burst layer, copied that same effect and then just offset the colors by one so that each layer would show the next color in the sequence, just delayed by four frames. I also found that adding this cycling uh, fill color effect to these bursts, it looks really cool and exciting, but to make the wiggle paths we added to the shape at the very beginning a lot more subtle because this color animation is so, you know, so intense. So to add some more variety to that, we might want to go into our burst spiky layers and change some of the wiggle path properties, maybe to make it a bit more intense. So their movement might be a bit more obvious, not just their color. Please take a deep look through this project file that's available for free down in the description and try to apply some of these effects to your own animations. I've made a short playlist of some related videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. I'll see you in the next video and please consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week.